Do you believe love can bloom on the battlefield? Well, you meet all kinds of players in For Honor, so maybe, just maybe, you'll find your knight in shining armor or samurai or viking. Point is, there are tons of different ways to play For Honor, and we're going to discuss them today. Hi, I'm Alpha Lance with the Leaderboard, and today we're talking about the nine players you meet in For Honor. Number one, the main. Of course, our first mention has to be the player who stuck with their first hero through thick and thin, through buff and nerf. The main is the player who chose a favorite hero and mastered them, or at least is in the process of doing so, for a personal reason that outweighs meta changes or trends. Maybe they always wanted to be a samurai, so Orochi was their dream. Perhaps the power of the Highlander grabbed their attention and never let go. Or they just wanted to wield the most versatile weapon ever invented. Whatever the reason, whatever the season, the main continues to play their hero, never growing bored of using the same combos and moves, but learning their rhythm and how to throw their opponents off the best time to faint. These players are easiest to pick out after multiple matches. No matter the game mode, no matter the map, or how the last match went, they will always be the same hero. If they do their job right, you may even start to associate their name with that hero. You might also pick out the main in your first match with them as they'll have high level equipment as well as a high reputation with the majority of that reputation clearly linked to their selected hero. It's when this second part is missing that you get our next player. Number two, the whale. The elusive whale. The reason why Steel Sails still exists, but also why this game can keep afloat. I mean, sure, us playing the game still counts for some of that, but we owe a big thanks to those players who you will see with epic or maybe even legendary gear, even though their hero is only at level 18. The whale is a player who knows gear is more than cosmetically cool, but a numbers advantage and therefore a way to get an edge, and they want any advantage they can get a hold of or can, can afford, you know what I mean. Never fear though, they may not have the skills to follow up that legendary gear. Whales can vary in size, that is to say, size of wallet. Some may go so far as to boost all their character's gear to high rarities, customize them with exclusive outfits, and taunt you with expensive emotes and executions, while other whales are smaller and more subtle, only amping up one character so they can feel like they have an ace up their sleeve when the going gets tough. These players are easier to spot in lower levels, but when you get into higher levels and more players are likely to have this rarity of gear, they'll start to blend in with those that have dedicated the steel they earned fair and square onto their hero, like the main and the veteran players. It's when you'll also meet our more intense players, like... Number 3. The Skirmish Addict These are the players that play the deathmatch mode Skirmish exclusively, preferring this mode for its superior... <laughs> Nah, we're just kidding. These, these don't exist. We're just kidding. Actual number three, the wall, aka the lion turtle, aka the player who's just got so good at blocking that you just can't get one hit in. These players have mastered the art of blocking every attack you throw at them, so you think, I'll just need to pull off some unblockable move to break through their defense, but then you find out they've also mastered the art of parrying said attacks, so you'll need to break their guard, but they know this, so they've also perfected the guard break interrupt too. Just like a stone holding strong against a tornado, the wall stands against your attacks in a one-on-one. -on -one. These players may be playing heavy characters like the Warlord, but it's not required. They may be playing a Vanguard class or hybrid class hero using the hero's ability to hold their block in place. Nobushi can even get tricky with her hidden stance. Assassin class characters can be used effectively by the wall as well, but then they become even more fearsome if mastered. These walls have mastered their timing and are probably looking to use your attacks as a chance to parry and stab you in the gut a few times. Seriously, watch your kidneys. In lower level, these players can be quite frustrating. Their blocks will sap your stamina and their parries will will your health, and when you're just starting out, you're not as familiar with advanced moves like feigning attacks or timing your strikes. In higher levels, these players may not be as frustrating, but they'll make your matches longer. Time your strikes, become more defensive yourself, and call out for aid because more blades can make light work. Number 4. The Jester these players are the Nats of Dominion and other team-based game modes in For Honor. These players are sort of supports in that they'll come to your aid and or bother the enemy team. The Jester may play heroes with stealth to run around the battlefield relatively unnoticed, striking your opponents in the back of the head with a sucker punch or a guard break. But these bothersome players may go for larger, less subtle ways to make an opening. The Lawbringer's Impaling Charge, the Conqueror's Shield Bash, and Shigoki's Crashing Thunder are all great ways to make an entrance, not gonna deny, especially if said enemy is positioned near a pit. The jester goes for the laughs rather than going to be honorable. 
These players like to use abilities with debuffs as well as chucking long range attacks like bombs, bows, and fire flasks, hopefully while you're not in range as well, to finish off their opponents. Admittedly, they may be kill stealers as well, but they're typically not trying to piss off their teammates. The biggest difference between jesters and trolls is jesters are players who aren't afraid to play dirty, but aren't trying to make the game unfun for their own team. They may troll you, but they aren't trolling their teammates. They'll bait the enemy into reviving a teammate they can jump down on, but they won't knock their teammates off a ladder. Number 5 the Paladin. And no, I don't mean a Nightmane. Nearly the opposite of the Jester, the Paladin is an honor-bound combatant seeking the fairest fight possible, and typically one-on-one -on -one duels, even in the midst of fighting for point B. The Paladin does not ledge their opponents. The Paladin does not engage in ganking up on their enemies, and the Paladin always ends each duel with good fight. These players can often be spotted before Blade is even crossed by them using a respectful emote like a bow, or a salute, or a pelvic thrust. Okay, so maybe not tasteful, but respectful still. How you respond to this is up to you. You can lunge in for a cheap shot, but you'll encroach their wrath, while taking the second to emote back may lead to them not using their strongest combos. The Paladin may also be the wall player, as both excel in one-on-one -on -one matchups. The Paladin may play a defensive style, letting their opponents come to them, but Paladins can still be rather aggressive. They are still trying to kill you after all. The Paladin may have a few similar traits to our next player. Number 6. The Whirlwind aka the combo maker. Slow and steady may win the race, but the whirlwind doesn't listen to such cautionary tales. Unleash a flurry of blows. This offensive player knows the combos that will allow them a never-ending chain of stuns, grabs, knockbacks, and strikes to bring you down into the wreck. These players can use a variety of heroes to accomplish this task. Orogis can attack with their lightning speed, going from parry to full assault, while the Lawbringer and Warden have several moves to juggle their opponents while they beat them into submission. You may not be able to spot these players from a distance, but you'll recognize one when you found one, because you'll just want to take your hands off the controls in frustration, because the game is no longer in your control. These barrages typically need more setup and rely on flustering their opponents into not thinking straight. So if you can get off on the right foot, you may survive long enough to at least get one hit in. But don't get cocky when you survive that one. They may have a few combos up their sleeve. The Whirlwind may also be a main, as both require a certain level of mastery with a character. And as we mentioned briefly before, such tactics are not above the Paladin. Mastery of combos does not equal unfair play, just a higher level of skill. Again, most combos have a weakness you can exploit. Learn it, or hope you get lucky. Number 7. The Button Masher The player that relies almost entirely on luck. The Button Masher is pretty self-explanatory. A player who knows their favorite character, maybe even knows the basic premise of their moveset, and goes wild. Unlike in other games though, For Honor has a stamina system that makes the old style of button mashing very dangerous. Some players were forced to learn combos or patience, but these players simply evolved the form. The Button Masher is more often found on lower levels, playing simpler characters and or ones with a chain ending in an unblockable attack. They may trick you by pulling off some strong combos or even feigning, but these will be more by accident with no real follow-up. Though be careful, you may think you're fighting the Button Masher when they'll pull a 1-2 punch on you and start to unleash a whirlwind-style attack after they've gauged your ability and fighting style. They may simply be new or may simply be tired. Either way, you probably won't need to fear them, but remember that even a broken clock is right twice. They just might get you. Number 8. The Bot While not technically a player, the bots in For Honor can be rather memorable with their silly names and varying levels of lethality. For Honor is nice enough to fill in the missing roster slots of any disconnected player with a robot companion playing any hero, and they come in three flavors. Level 1 bots, which can only perform basic combos and have Josh-like reflexes, with some bots making no attempt to block your attacks while others will attack aggressively to the point of exhaustion. These bots make for crappy allies and easy points for their opponents. The level 2 bots, which are semi-competent at playing their heroes, and they make use of their character's full moveset, but will not make use of the environment and can be rather predictable. And of course, the ungodly level 3 bots that remind you that the computer knows exactly what you're going to do because you are telling it with every button press, and therefore each hit is just the computer deciding whether or not it wants to allow you to hit it. These enemies are ruthless, and depending on how the computer is feeling today, you may want to avoid these enemies more than some of your enemy players. They are aware of your current state as well as their own. Remember, they won't allow you to guard break them when they are out of stamina, and they will throw you off a ledge if able. 
Bots are by far the easiest players to pick out because they are clearly labeled as bots, followed by some of their funny usernames like our favorites here, Boopzilla, Beatdown Machine, Bagel of Death, Golden Girls with a Z, Cake Stealer, Left Shark, and Red, White, and Brew, to name a few of them. Number nine, the Faction Devotee. Our last player is the one that when asked, which faction do you pledge to, took their answer very seriously. These knights, vikings, and samurai have chosen to fully embody their faction and only play knights, vikings, or samurai. These choices don't get them any extra points, or faster experience points even. They just give them an extra bit of flair if they have a stream or a YouTube channel. They probably see it as a point of pride or something to brag about. That, or maybe they just really don't care about the other heroes. By the way, you gotta salute their devotion. And with that, we're out. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. Once again, I'm your host, Alpha Lance with Leaderboard, and be sure to check out our video about what your For Honor main says about you. And for more videos about your favorite games, don't forget to subscribe to The Leaderboard, your home for video game facts.